Welcome to Psytrends, I'm Eva Snyder. Camouflage is the art of not being seen. In the animal world, that's the difference between being alive and being lunch. The same goes for soldiers in the field. In order to stay safe, they need to blend in with their surroundings, whether that's a dense forest or rocky desert. Hiding in plain sight is a big challenge, but we spoke to some researchers who are trying to make it just a little easier. They're working on ways to conceal people, vehicles, and even entire buildings. And they're getting their inspiration from an unusual place, the bottom of the ocean. Woods Hole, Massachusetts is home to the Marine Biological Laboratory. Here, for more than a century, scientists have been doing cutting edge research on marine life. Biologist Roger Hanlon is one of them. So you can see the actual tiny little babies right in there. Hanlon is an expert on cephalopods, animals like octopus, squid, and cuttlefish. They've got an unusual ability. They can change their appearance dramatically within a quarter of a second. And there are other animals that change color and pattern, but none of them do it as fast or with as great a diversity as the squid and the octopus and the cuttlefish. In the wild, cephalopods use those skills to hide in plain sight and avoid predators. They can blend in in almost any background like this rock. Just keep an eye on that seaweed, and voila. It just looks entirely different from one moment to the other. That ability makes them incredible hunters. Yeah, flap, you got me, see that? Perfect. He's gonna go again, there he goes. Look at the color change. Oh! <laughs> so is there a reason why, like your fingers in it, it turns like really dark black, almost like the color of that. So you're the predator and you see those dark arms and it just kind of mesmerizes the prey. And it looks like a piece of algae when you look at it head on. And then these tentacles just shoot out at lightning speed. That's the cool thing. So there are a lot of visual tricks going on here when they do this towards prey organisms. Hanlon has spent years studying how they do this. Their secret? Millions of specialized organs called chromatophores. Each one is made up of a tiny sack of pigment. It's attached to a web of muscles in a cephalopod's skin. As those muscles contract, they pull on the sack and stretch it out to make it more visible. As different sacks overlap, their colors blend to create elaborate patterns. And in the process, they can camouflage themselves instantly. But for us humans, it's a little trickier. To find out what it takes, I met up with Sergeant Andrew Cochran. He's an army sniper and a camouflage expert. So, I got this camouflage suit on, right? So does this mean I'm good to go? Can I just go hide back there and you'll never see me? In theory, yes. In practicality and the advanced reconnaissance world, no. We'll actually take it a step farther and build a ghillie suit. A ghillie suit is a whole extra layer of camo. To make one, you start with a basic suit like this. If you want to try that on... I'd love to. We actually have a whole netting system in the back in order to cool you off and there's another clip-in net that we're actually gonna sew burlap into because it picks up more of the environment and it blends in closer with your actual surrounding. So this is only a second layer. The third layer that you actually put on is vegetation and that's the most important part. So you actually wanna blend in with what's behind you and not what you're actually sitting in. It creates an optical illusion to people looking at you. All right, so I'm, I'm ready to disappear. Can we go try to make a ghillie suit? Absolutely. So let's veg it up. You grab a huge pile of twigs, branches, bark, or anything else you can find from your surroundings, and all that stuff goes on too. You just find the openings in the net itself, and you just start pushing it through and weaving it in. So the point behind the burlap and the vegetation is to break up the natural human outline, head and shoulders. Just remember the object is to look like nothing and not like a big bush. And that's where a lot of people mess up a little bit is they want to look like a big bush or shrub or look like a little tree moving, very wily Coyote-ish. And uh, that's the complete opposite of what we're looking for here. Cool. I'm pretty crafty. <laughs> You're doing a good job. Making a suit like this takes hours, but the results are pretty impressive. Looks good. With all this extra foliage, I feel like I can blend right in, no problem. But we still need a few finishing touches. Yeah. All right. So why am I doing this again? All right, so the same reasons why we're wearing the ghillie suit, the last thing that you have to do is cover your hands and face in either mud or face paint. There we go. Mmm, smells earthy. <laughs> All right, so we've covered the ghillie suit, we've covered the face paint. One last thing. Okay. You gotta break in the ghillie suit and get it ready to roll. 
What does that mean? Into the swamp you go. In there? In there. <laughs> Just commit to it, it makes it less painful. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Okay, so it gets pretty messy, but in the end, it works. I mean, can you spot me in this picture? I didn't think so. But what if good camouflage didn't involve hours of work and rolling through swamps? What if we could just change colors like the cuttlefish? We have to rise to the occasion to learn how they do it and translate it. That's the challenge we have in biology and engineering. Roger Diebold is trying to meet that challenge. So welcome to our lab at Harvard. He's a materials scientist at Harvard University, and he's creating new technologies based on cephalopod skin. We're using their unique ability to change color to inspire a new kind of digital display. Instead of using tiny lights to make an image, like a TV or a cell phone screen, he's using pixels made out of sacks of ink. He calls them artificial chromatophores. And just like the real thing, they're made of flexible materials that can expand and contract. We're imitating how the chromatophores sort of change in size. We're just changing the size of the, the ink that you can see. Push ink into a rubber blister, you'll see a color. Pull it out again, and it turns white. It's a simple idea, but it's based on high-tech materials. Each artificial chromatophore is made of three main parts. There's a flexible rubber membrane, an ink reservoir, and a special material called a dielectric elastomer. When it's charged with electricity, it changes shape, squeezing ink into view. This design can only handle one color, but Diebold is also working on a newer version. Just like a cephalopod, it uses overlapping sacks of pigments to make almost any color. And since the pixels are built on a flexible surface, they can be wrapped around a car, truck, or even a building. So we have one pixel and four pixels here, but you can imagine making thousands of these pixels and covering something like this wall right here. Imagine hiding a structure with the push of a button, or making a car that can blend in no matter where it goes. If scientists like Hanlon and Diebold can harness the secrets of cuttlefish, hiding in plain sight could be as easy as this. For Psytrans, I'm Eva Snyder.